Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. An eight-year-old fighting for his life tonight after police say the child found a gun at home and shot himself in the head. Warren police got to the scene immediately and got that little boy to Ascension St. John for emergency surgery. That story tops our news tonight at 11. I'm Kimberly Gill. And I'm Damon Fernandez in for Devin Skillian. So how does something like this happen? Well, for starters, the gun was not secured, but with the new gun safety bills which passed through the Michigan legislature, it now makes what happened here a felony. Amara McDonald is live at Ascension St. John tonight. And Mara, what do we know about this little boy's condition right now? Well, Damon, we know that when police got on the scene there that he was still breathing on his own, that his heart was still beating on its own. All of that said, his injuries are grave and he's here at Ascension St. John right now in critical condition. Warren detectives in and out of this apartment building near Tenant Hoover for several hours trying to break it all down. Whose gun is it? Is it registered? And why wasn't it secured? When we got here, we found an eight-year-old child that had suffered a what appears to be a self-inflicted gunshot to his head. Uh, the child was still alive and still breathing and still conscious. When we got here, uh, we rushed him with the Warren Fire Department to St. John Main Hospital, where he is currently in critical condition. This little boy wasn't home alone. His parents were there as well as his younger brothers and sisters. Why and how he got his hands on the gun, well, it's still under investigation. But under a new Michigan law passed just this year, it makes what happened here a felony. Adults who fail to secure their firearms in a home where children are present face a host of charges. However, if a child fires the gun, it can be anywhere from a five to ten year felony with a fine in the thousands. There are laws now in place if you don't keep your, your firearms secured and if things happen with them, um, you'll go to prison and uh, unfortunately this is worst case scenario and that's why we have laws like this. Uh, we give away free gun locks at our desk. I would implore you that if you have a firearm and it's, you don't have a way to lock it up in a safe, please come see us. We will get you a gun lock for your gun. Back here alive, understandably, family members at this scene were extremely upset. They're worried about this child. They're worried about his parents, about whether somebody is going to get charged here. As we know it right now, the mom is here at the hospital. The dad is still being interviewed by the Warren Police Department. Mm -hmm. We're live on Detroit's east side at Ascension St. John. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. Yeah, lots of people hoping that little boy's going to be okay. Yeah. Thanks, Mara. You know, every year there's a nationwide DEA drug take back. But this year in Detroit, it's going to be a little different because of the NFL draft. Jacqueline Francis joins us live tonight with how it will work. Jacqueline. Yeah, so the rest of the country will do drug take back day next Saturday. But as we know, that's when Detroit will be hosting the NFL draft. Police will be busy with that. Downtown will be crazy. So instead, the DEA moved the take back day for Detroit to tomorrow. If you live in the city of Detroit or near Detroit precinct, you can go down to the precinct and dispose of your uh, prescription medication that you no longer want or has expired. Unused, unwanted, or whatever the reason, the Drug Enforcement Administration is here to take those medications off your hands, and for a good reason. Well, you have pills in your medicine cabinet. Um, they can fuel a current addiction or start a new addiction or lead to an accidental poisoning. So we can get those pills out of the medicine cabinets and properly disposed of. We can stop an addiction before it begins. Nationwide, this year's drug take back day is April 27th, but Detroit will have it a week early to allow officers to focus on the NFL draft. We can't stop the entire nation just because we're hosting the draft. So we partnered with DPD and said, when is the date that we can do it? Last April in Detroit, they collected more than 11,000 pounds of unused or unwanted medication sending it to the incinerator for safe disposal. If the pills get thrown out in the trash, they end up in a landfill or flush down the toilet, they do seep into the groundwater. And our friends at the municipal water, they say, if we can get those out of the groundwater, it'd be really helpful. So Highland Park, Wayne State, and Detroit police will be participating in Take Back Day tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at their local precincts. So that's for Detroit, and then everyone else will have it next Saturday. Reporting live in Detroit, Jacqueline Francis, Local right. 4. Thank you for that explanation, Jacqueline. We appreciate it.
New to Lebanon, the Oakland County Sheriff sounding the alarm over a jury duty scam. Oakland County Sheriff Mike Bouchard says a caller impersonating a law enforcement official told a woman she had an arrest warrant for missing jury duty. The caller then demanded money to avoid being arrested. A Huntington Woods woman was scammed out of $18,000. The sheriff says neither law enforcement nor court officials will ever ask for any kind of payment to avoid arrest. Court officials say delinquent jurors are only contacted by mail. The sheriff wants residents to just hang up the phone if they get one of those calls. The new president at Michigan State University is settling into his job and talking to Local 4. Kevin Guskowitz just took over after years of upheaval, including a deadly campus shooting. The new president says there's always room for improvement, and among things, campus security is being upgraded. We're installing a lot of cameras on campus. Uh, uh, protocols are important. We're making sure that our faculty, staff, students understand the uh, emergency action pro uh, protocols. And uh, so we've learned from that situation, and, and, and we're... Always, there's always going to be room for improvement, but I feel good about where we are right now. Guskovic says he's in the middle of a 48-stop listening tour to hear from everyone in the campus community. You can hear the entire interview online at clickondetroit.com. A former Catholic school will be transformed into affordable housing in Detroit. Today, Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist and other officials announced the new project. It's happening on the site of the historic St. Mary of Redford School on Detroit's west side, north of I-96. The former school building will be turned into more than 60 units of affordable housing for Detroit residents struggling with chronic homelessness. Opening statements are set to begin Monday morning in former President Donald Trump's hush money trial. Today, a full 12-person jury, along with six alternates, was finalized. The former president was asked if he would testify while leaving the courtroom today, to which he simply said yes. Trump pleaded not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records. He's also accused of making a $130,000 payment to an adult film actress, Stormy Daniels, at the end of the 2016 election cycle after her allegation that she and Mr. Trump had a sexual encounter. A last-minute change of venue motion by Trump's attorney attempting to move the trial to Staten Island was rejected by a New York appeals court. Outside the court, New York police say a man is very critical after he set himself on fire. Now, this happened before 2 p.m. as a man was walking in, uh, into protest area outside the courthouse. Police say he threw pamphlets into the air, doused himself with an accelerant, and set himself on fire. Investigators say the man is from St. Augustine, Florida, and arrived in the city earlier this week. Four police officers and one court officer did sustain minor injuries dealing with that fire. All right, so we're counting down to Detroit in the national spotlight. We're about six days away from the NFL draft. That we are. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan is getting into the draft spirit. Take a look at its headquarters in downtown Detroit. It's illuminated with a Honolulu blue football. This year's NFL draft is the first time Detroit will host the massive event. And if you head downtown Detroit for business or pleasure for that matter this weekend, watch out for new road closures leading up to the draft. All right, here's what you need to know. Tomorrow, starting tomorrow at 6 a.m., both sides of Woodward around Campus Marshes will close. Also expect closures in the same area on Michigan Avenue, Fort, Larned, Congress, and Monroe. And make sure you're not parked in those areas overnight because you could be towed away. Now we have complete details on clickondetroit.com. All right, a touch chilly out there, windy too, but uh, overall a gorgeous day today and a beautiful night headed into the weekend. Let's see how we're looking. Here's meteorologist Kim Adams. Well, Kim, we have to lower the, the bar just a little bit for the start of the weekend tomorrow as temps will only be in the upper 40s. Add to it a pretty strong wind and it, there's definitely going to be a chill in the air. 47 tonight, 44 in Howe, 45 in Pontiac, and upper 40s in Adrian. Well, we got temps already down into the low 40s, up into the thumb, and in fact, it's 40 in Lapeer. We'll drop down into the 30s tonight, so it will definitely be cold when you wake up tomorrow morning. And it's colder right now than it was last night by about 14 to 15 degrees on the west side. 14 degrees colder right now than it was at 11 o'clock last night. 16 degrees colder out in Ann Arbor. So definitely a chill for the morning tomorrow, we've got some rain up north, even a little bit of snow in parts of northern lower Michigan. Around here, though, we've just got a few clouds down along the Ohio border around Monroe, down to Toledo. 
but we're nice and clear here. We will see some clouds overnight tonight and then becoming mostly cloudy tomorrow with highs again only reaching the upper 40s with those winds out of the west at 10 to 20. Temperature trend, uh, well, we go up for the beginning of the week, but just in time for that draft, we drop back down below normal. We'll talk about our next chance for rain coming up. Okay, Kim.